Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Gamer. So, today we're going to get another fun and exciting episode for you guys this Friday because what we're going to be doing today is using the Pixel FX more 4K in conjunction with my Frame Meister so we have full analog in on the scalar side and we can get to 4K. Because when I ran the initial review, a lot of people asked about this and it is one of the bits in the marketing material from Pixel FX that you can use your old scalar as the analog input and then just chain that into the more 4K to get to your final 4K scale. So, we're going to take a look at that today. Before we get too far in love though, do me a huge favor, down below hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But what we're going to be doing today is letting the Frame Meister handle all of the analog inputs up to 720p, and then we're going to ingest that 720p signal into the HDMI in on the more 4K, and let that scale up to 4K, since 720p over to 4K is an integer scale, that is how you would want to do it. We're going to start off with Die Hard Arcade, it is one of my favorite 3D beat em ups of all time, so anytime I'm featuring real Sega Saturn hardware testing, you are going to be seeing Die Hard Arcade. And I will say off the top, I absolutely love the Frame Meister. I've owned it for years, and up until the point that I bought my RetroShrink 4K, I have used the Frame Meister exclusively for the channel when I'm capturing real hardware analog signals, whether it is consoles or arcades. And I will say right off the top, this is a very nice looking image. Putting these two together, the Frame Meister and the More 4K, has been great for me so far. And again, that 720p signal to 4K is a very nice scale. Now, this is not something I would go out and buy a Frame Meister and OSSC or a RetroTink 5X4. Using this feature, bridging these two devices together, is so if you already have a scale that doesn't go to 4K, at $400 you can let the More 4K do the final job for you and use all of the different effects on the More 4K so that you get them looking correct on your screen. Because I will show you the scan lines both across the More 4K and the Frame Meister so you can understand the difference in between both of them. So we'll pause right here and you'll see that I have both the Frame Frame Meister on screen display as well as the more 4k these two devices are running in conjunction and I will say on the latency side of things I did not have any issues perceivable playing these I did not measure the latency though this is more just a visual test to see how they all work in conjunction so this is what the scan lines look like on the more 4k and I did raise the gamma a little bit because I like a little more of a bright image when I'm using scan lines but tell me down below what you think as far as that is concerned so now we'll go ahead and turn those scan lines off and what I will do is turn them on on the frame meister so you will see that they come on here in a different on-screen display and this still looks good I just obviously think the more 4k scan lines look better because they're being generated at the 4k resolution and signal versus the frame meister doing it at 720p and then those scan lines being scaled as well so definitely use all of the effects on something like the more 4k if you were chaining any sort of scaler together I always recommend just letting the first scaler for analog do all the work getting the signal up and then letting the more 4k bring it to 4k and then putting your effects on top but getting the intro here to Mega Man X4 or Rock Man X4 because obviously this is the Japanese copy and this again looks spectacular sure the Frame Meister is old but when it came out it was basically the Cadillac as far as scalers were concerned and I still think it is a great device and just looking at the image here with no effects over it whatsoever I again think this looks incredible this is a great function if you have another scaler already around and you just want to go to 4K. Frame Meister, OSSC, Retro Tink, you can all plug them into the more 4K HDMI input in the back and then let it finish the job. And the Sega Saturn is one of my favorite consoles of all time. I think it has great output as far as 2D and 3D games are concerned. And I'm doing this all over RGB, so I'm getting the best possible signal quality out of the Sega Saturn. And again, if I just probably told you that I was just scaling this at a 4K scaler with analog inputs and didn't tell you what I was using, you would probably just believe that. This is a very fun feature, and I understand why people wanted to see this in motion. Because I'm sure most of you have some sort of scaler in your setup right now, whether it's something like a Frame Meister, an OSSC, or a RetroTINK that isn't the 4K, and you're wondering to yourself, should I upgrade to a 4K scaler with analog in there? Should I just let my television do the 1080p to 4K scale for me? Should I invest in a RetroTINK 4K, or can I get away with the more 4K without the analog bridge? And of course, at some point in time, that analog bridge is going to come out, and you will get the inputs in the back, kind of negating this, but again, if you own a scaler, you don't have to buy that extra accessory if you don't want to. Now, moving on to the House of the Dead, 
had admittedly an ugly conversion compared to Model 2. It definitely has a worse frame rate and a lot worse graphics, but it's one of those games I absolutely know the feel and look of it. If it looks correct, I'm going to be able to instantaneously recognize it. If there's anything off about it, I would notice that as well. And again, just letting the Frame Meister handle the signal and then passing that through to the more 4K, I am getting to a 4K resolution, and this is extremely playable outside of the fact that obviously you need to use a controller here because you need a CRT television for light gun support. So this is just again a visual test and I'll put the scan lines back on so you get another chance to see what they look like in action on the more 4K because I do think they look very good on Sega Saturn content and something like the House of the Dead that has pretty ugly 3D. I think the scan lines actually do a decent job of kind of making the image a little bit more presentable and hiding a little bit of the fact that this is definitely a way worse version of the game than the Model 2 original. But you tell me down below what you think of the signals so far. I do know, like I said, that the Frame Meister is quite old, but that doesn't mean it isn't great. I still love the Frame Meister. I still use it in my bedroom to get some of my analog sources into that TV when I feel like gaming before I fall asleep. There's definitely still a large use case for the Frame Meister, and its sync level adjustments are still absolutely incredible for arcade boards. I use it as much as I use my RetroTink 4K just because I am comfortable with it. And the best part is we're getting so many different options on the market right now. There's definitely room in the scalar space for more than one product on the market and that is always good. And do not get me wrong, I think the RetroTink 4K is a 10 out of 10 product. I absolutely love it, but I'm here to talk about the other options. So let's just go ahead and turn off the scan lines so you'll see the image going back and that pixelation comes up a little bit more. Scan lines definitely do help on 3D with Sega Saturn, but on the 2D games generally I prefer to just keep them off. But that's the best part about all of these devices. It gives you the freedom and the options to decide to do whatever you would like to do. You articulate the image the way you would like to see it and then you go from there. And so you are aware what I'm doing here with the Frame Meister, you could do the same thing with any other scaler that outputs an HDMI signal. This is not something that just the Frame Meister is capable of and honestly, the Frame Meister doesn't even have pass-through modes. There's other scalers on the market using pass-through that would be even better for this result. Result. But that is why an HDMI import is so convenient on a device like this or on the RetroTrink 4K. It does allow you to put other signals via HDMI into the back of it because, again, I'm quite happy with this. Now let's move over to Virtual Fighter 2 and you'll see here that signal valid screen came up. The Frame Meister can be a little slow in switching inputs from 240p to 480i, and that is something it's notoriously not great at, but honestly to me, it's never really bothered me that much. The more 4K picks up the new signal the minute that the Frame Meister outputs it, and it does an incredible job of finding it. Whatever sort of blips you see here are the Frame Meister's fault. But I know when I talked about the Sega Saturn Mr. FPGA core and how it handles video versus real Saturn hardware, you'll see here letting the more 4K handle the interlacing, we are getting a more stable image. It is not exactly what I see when I see the RetroTrink 4K. I do still think that the Morph could use some firmware updates to make the motion adaptive the interlacing a little bit more solid because every once in a while the image and models will jump around, but we're like 95% of the way there. And again, Again, all of these firmwares evolve. I know some of the previous comments in the video said that if the feature is not done when it ships that people were upset and I can understand that thought process. You want to open the box just start using things but at the same time technical products, computer products, anything like this, the product that you take out of the box is not the product you're using again in a year whether it's your cell phone, your television or anything else. So I personally don't mind getting updates to the firmware to improve features and add new features along the way but that's totally subjective you guys get to decide what works for you but watching the virtual fighter 2 footage here i am very happy with this image it's probably running like 95 to 96 percent as good as the retrotrink 4k's motion adaptive de interlacing but the retrotrink 4k would definitely be the gold standard like she's done so much work under the hood in the code to get that there but i'm sure the more 4k will and can improve on itself now moving over to the last game in the test, Bubble Symphony. I absolutely love this game. I played it probably two, three dozen times in my life. I have the Taito F3 arcade board with this cartridge in my closet. I have many different ways to play this game. But why I'm saying that is I'm very familiar with this again. All the pastel colorways, the cute, charming 2D graphics, the Frame Meister into the more 4K just looks incredible here. I have no issues with this signal whatsoever. 
Now I'm sure when the analog bridges come out, Pixel Effects will send them to me and I will install them on camera, explain them to you and review them for you. So those are definitely going to be a great product. And honestly, once that is available, I don't know that I would actually put my Frame Meister into the back of the Morph 4K if I have the ability to just add a board onto the Morph and get the same inputs, just using them a little bit differently. And let's just pop back into video here and just play around because you will see that you can can adjust the scaling you can do a full screen fit and it'll lose a little bit of content or you can go to that exact integer scale and you just have a little bit of letterboxing at the top and bottom and that's something that on the Sega Saturn every single game has a slightly different output that's how it worked back in the day and that's what you're gonna see here but with freeform you can kind of adjust that around as well but I'm excited to see the analog bridge come out for the more 4k so I have all those analog ports in the back because that would be the most easy way to use something like this but if you have any of the 1080p scalers on the market and all you want to do is go to 4k you should be perfectly fine here it might be a situation where depending on the settings you have on your particular scaler you might end up with a frame or so of lag chaining them together but in my experience here just letting the frame meister run in its standard mode and letting the more 4k handle the 720p signal from there i was very happy to use these two items in conjunction and it is nice that it gives life to all Old hardware because honestly I was gonna put my frame meister on the shelf and just look at it because I have fond memories of it but now until the analog bridge comes out it's definitely gonna go into my working mix and don't forget you can have two scalers that's totally fine but if you really really want to you can add a third scaler into the mix and did asked for this visual gag that is a kitchen scale we're done and I'll see you next time bye bye